you could then save this out as a component like we did above. In fact, let's do that. So let's, to do that, we want to do toggle uh, default. So this is our default. This is our toggle default to toggle default three. And this is our toggle. Uh, what did we call it here? We called it enabled. So this is our toggle enabled. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste that instead of typing each time. Two and three. So now if we create that as a component set, rename that toggle, let's call it liquid toggle. And pull it in, liquid, there we go. Need to make sure our, whoops, our starting state is default. We need to frame it, and there we go. So now, now we can actually pull this in and put this anywhere in our designs. And as soon as you go to play, no matter what design you've put it into, you will have that animated interactive component of a liquid toggle, which doesn't seem to be working. And let's find out why. Okay, so what's a bit annoying here is that because we've now created a component set, it's actually removed all those uh, transitions that we created before. So this is annoying, but it's also an opportunity to practice what you've learned and you can follow along with me again as we quickly go through. So just to make sure we know what, how we were doing it, we were this stage, we were waiting for a user imp interaction, in this case, a click. Uh, so on click, we're going to change to that one, smart animate, and we were going to ease in because it's the start, the start of the animation, we're easing in. Next step, we're doing a, we're not waiting for an on click, we're gonna do for an after delay, one millisecond, which is the smallest number we can go for. We're doing it linear because we're just trying to go through, we're thinking of this all as one animation. So you can think of this as the beginning of the curve. And lastly, let me just double check that I have set that one correctly. Yep, one, yep. And then lastly, we want to do an ease out. Again, after a delay, we don't wanna wait for a user input. And we're gonna do it linear, smart animate. And we're not gonna do it linear, sorry, we're gonna do an ease out because it's the end of our animation. Feel free to skip this section if you want to. Um, again, we're doing an on click because we're waiting for a user interaction and we're gonna do an ease in quickly now. We're not doing that, we're doing after a delay, we're gonna do linear. Lastly, after delay, one millisecond, and we're gonna do an ease out because it's the end of the animation, the end of the curve. Okay, so that's our interactive component built um, across six keyframes, and let's have a look now. Like I have mentioned in all my videos, I leave any mistakes in. I don't like to cut out mistakes because as you're following along or trying to recreate these, you will come across mistakes as you're learning and it's a good to know how to fix them. So if we click that, we've now got this lovely interactive component. So just to show, just to prove that you can now use that anywhere in your designs, I'm just going to mock up a really quick um, application and I'm going to be pulling in this liquid toggle here. Just gonna change the beginning state to default. Um, and I'm going to put some text next to it. Uh, call it setting one. As you'll see, because this is huge, um, we've made this huge. So actually what we wanna do is go and set our frame height first to something more reasonable, like, I don't know, six. In fact, we can do one better than that. We can click A on our keyboard and then we can just pull in a frame already. So here we've got a iPhone 13 Pro Max. I'm gonna pull this liquid toggle in. 
I'm gonna lock it and we're gonna change it to 36. There we go. So just like that, we've now got a toggle at the correct size for what we want to do. In fact, I'm just gonna six times two, just for the point of demonstrating in this video so we can see it easily. I'm gonna add setting one. This isn't pretty, but it's just to prove a point. Two, setting three. Okay, so now if we go into our app, we can see that these all work individually as interactive components. And that's pretty cool. We did see actually when we first loaded this, and I'll do a reload, that it actually played the animation by itself. So that's something we've got to go fix. See it, how it went from that automatic on? That's because we're actually halfway through a state. So this is why it's important to set your correct state and load it again. There we go. And now it's working. So you've you've essentially created a interactive liquid toggle in Figma that you can reuse anywhere in your apps, anywhere, which is really cool. So the next step is how we're going to bring this into After Effects. So how we're going to take what we've created here, uh, where, wherever it is, what we've created here and recreate it in After Effects. And there's two ways of doing this. We can either do it by using this as a guide and recreating it um, by eye in After Effects using the numbers we've got here, um, or we can actually send this directly to After Effects and work that way. Uh, we'll probably be going to be doing recreating from scratch in After Effects rather than uh, directly exporting, but I will show you how to do that in the next video.